morning all now I'm a big fan of solar lights garden solar lights so I just thought I'd uh, go through a few of these and uh, check if they're still working so let's start with this one here this is a classic uh, light stick sort of thing you get at the pound shop let's see if that one's working now this is um, probably uh, monocrystalline or polycrystalline strips of solar panels uh, linked together with uh, a metal tabbing strip and then coated in a sort of uh, plastic resin but the trouble is the plastic resin eventually goes cloudy and it started to happen here and also cracks up and eventually moisture gets in and in fact this is where the uh, monocrystalline polycrystalline don't fare as well as the amorphous in that respect so pound shop solar lights seem to have the uncanny knack of lasting exactly a year and a day um, so that you can't take them back under warranty not that you'd take anything back to the pound shop it would be quite embarrassing um, this one has failed so that can go in the bin although I might keep that plastic tube that could be handy for something who knows now this one wasn't pound shop this was actually uh, Wilkinson's and I think it was uh, 10 pounds for a pack of three and these are quite nice this is um, amorphous panels which do fare better because they're genuine glass and as long as the ceiling around the edges doesn't give way these can last for years and years and in fact this light which does still work I think I can show that yeah there are the three LEDs on yeah you can see them going on and off this one's still working after I think about five years so the seals on the underside of the battery compartment there must just be very good. Um, I've got four of these in total and I think one has failed so uh, I just got lucky I guess. Okay this is a sort of classic pound shop light although I think actually this one did come from Wilkinson's but here you've got strips of now that's probably polycrystalline uh, solar panels tabbed together and uh, set under a sort of epoxy top. This one hasn't started to uh, cloud over yet because it's not that old. Let's see if it works. I can't get the LED to go off. No, oh, there it is, it's gone off. And there it's come on. So that one's still working, so that's good. Now this one, uh, stainless steel, is from Sainsbury's Supermarkets. And uh, this one, I think, still works. Let's give it a try. Yeah, there's the LED coming on. So quite a nice, large, amorphous panel on this one. Let's see if I can catch the light on that. Um, so that's going to be glass top. That should last pretty much forever, as long as the seals uh, stay intact. This could uh, go on for quite some time. Now, the printed circuit board is visible down through that hole. So it is exposed to the elements, but um, this one, as you can see, is still working fine. Probably because uh, the plastic cover keeps most of the moisture out. Now this one's quite interesting. Sainsbury's uh, Supermarkets, again. It's got quite a large uh, amorphous panel. Single AA rechargeable cell in that little compartment at the back. I'm gonna, I'm gonna open this one up because out of these four light sticks that came with it, three of them have failed. Let's see if I can trigger them. Yeah, so there's the one that's still working and you can see that one's nice and clean inside. The others have gone all manky and brown and there's a little clue to that because inside the plastic cases, I don't know whether you can see this, but there's condensation. So what appears to happen is that although that top glass plastic is reasonably well sealed on there the moisture gets in condenses uh, when it gets cool drops down into the little plastic bowl in there and destroys the LED but as I say this one is still working and that's good because that means that the uh, solar module is still working now the label on this says 1.2 volts well that's fine that's the nickel metal hydride cell and it says the leds are 3.2 volts so there must be a boost step up converter in that box 
and they're 64 milliwatts times 4 which is 256 milliwatts so that's quarter of a watt. Now what I want to do because three of the four lamps have failed is cut all those lamps off and fit on the end of this green wire a 1 watt bead LED just to see how much light I can get out of that 1 watt LED but if this thing's only going to produce quarter of a watt and in fact if you flip the label over it says total max wattage of light chain 0.256 watts so quarter of a watt the the LED is not going to be particularly bright but we've got some uh, almost identical sets of these and I noticed there's a slight difference on them so here's an almost identical um, unit the amorphous panels are a slightly different color on this one for some reason but this one says Sainsbury's supermarkets um, 3.2 volts for the LED rating 64 milliwatts per lamp but times 8 because this one has 8 of these little plastic um, fabric coated LEDs where the fabric has long since lost its colour. These were really brightly coloured at one time and it's all uh, gone horrible and uh, been destroyed. So, um, but I think all these eight LEDs still work. And then there's another one over here which again has eight of these little sort of bamboo coated LED things and that has an amorphous panel which does look the same as the one with the four LEDs. So the point is, this unit has a total max wattage of light chain of half a watt, and half a watt would be pretty reasonable for lighting up a one watt LED. It'd also have the advantage that the one watt LED wouldn't get too hot, so it'd probably survive without any heat sinking. Now these two sets of lights, these uh, plastic coloured ones which are no longer coloured, and the bamboo ones, were actually bought by my wife, so I probably don't have authorization yet um, to take them apart but I can take apart the uh, the other one because uh, three of the four lamps have failed. So I've opened up the uh, battery compartment on this I think the reason this has survived is because it's got really deep uh, flange on there and a really deep groove around the battery compartment and you can see that um, although there's a little bit of corrosion on the positive terminal there's almost nothing on the spring got this really rather nasty 500 milliamp hour nickel metal hydride um, again not a huge amount of corrosion on there very little in fact but we could put in a much more uh, capacious or battery with a higher capacity than that so let's uh, take more of this thing apart so there's very little inside this thing the circuit board is just three discrete transistors there's a little inductor there, 101, so that's probably 100 micro henrys, and a bunch of resistors. The green board there just has a switch on it, and it's for the on-off switch, which is encased in a little rubber housing. Now, the amorphous panel is actually two amorphous panels. You can see that there are some, uh, they're in parallel. There are some wires running down here and here, paralleling this panel to this panel. So it looks to me like what they do is they cut these panels in half for the other solar lights. So you may be able to see that the markings on this amorphous panel, you've got that square up there with a little dash in it, are exactly the same as the markings on this solar panel, but on the uh, multi-LED unit there are two panels still attached so I suspect what they do is they uh, make strips of these things and then cut them up. So that's a single and that's a double. So let's switch off the unit. I think that's off. That's hard to tell because there's no battery. Yeah, pretty sure that's off. Okay, and now cut this wire. Um, okay. And now what I'm going to do is solder one of these little one watt bead LEDs uh, onto the end of that wire. I've brought out my 12 volt uh, CS18 soldering iron which I've connected up to a conveniently located 12 volt battery over there and I'm going to see if I can do some soldering on the lawn. So my one watt LED is soldered on and is lit. It's hard to tell but you can see that it's lighting up the battery there. 
Okay, now the question is, is that uh, being driven at a quarter of a watt or half a watt? Is there something inherently limiting the current flowing through that? Now the only one I'm going to know that is to measure the current with a DVM, so I guess I'm going to have to unsolder this again. So there's the uh, probes attached to the LED. Now my sinometer is saying that the current is 22 milliamps, which seems very low. Let's put on the 20 milliamp range. And that's saying 17 milliamps. So well, it's not surprising because uh, there's probably less current flowing through. Yes, in fact, if you look at the LED, if I switch it between ranges, you may not be able to see that, but the brightness is changing slightly. So it's going to be slightly inaccurate. So that doesn't seem right. Let me just do a quick calculation. So I'm now measuring voltage. Voltage is 1.37 volts. I've just noticed that my soldering iron is doing a very good job of burning the grass. Fine, I can smell it as well. So what was it? 1.37 volts times uh, about 22 milliamps equals 30. Uh, actually, I probably should do this in sensible units. 1.37 times 0.020. Um, no, 0.022. Ah, stupid calculator. 1.37 volts times 0.022. Uh, okay, so we're looking at um, 30 milliwatts. Is that 30 milliwatts? Yeah, 30 milliwatts. Well, that's not the uh, 256 milliwatts that this thing says it's going to push through the LED. So, uh, what's going on? So with a really dismal 22 milliamps going through my LED, I'm having to look at this circuit. Now, there are four resistors on here, uh, and only one of them is a reasonably low value, that one there, R4, 390 ohms. Now R4 has an asterisk next to it on the board, so that sort of hints that it might be a value that is different for whether you've got um, a single LED or whether you've got four LEDs or whether you've got eight LEDs. So I'm just going to take that in, change that resistor for half the value. Yeah, I'm attacked by a B. Um, so we'll go for about uh, 200 ohms, I guess, and uh, see if we can get a little bit more current through this LED. But I suspect that all these fancy numbers, 0.256 watts, and 0.064 watts per uh, LED is just a bit of a, a load of old rubbish. Okay, I've put a new resistor in for R4. There it is, perched up on those two bits of wire. It's a 220 ohms, and the LED is on, and I'm getting... Well, I've noticed that I have to put my hand over the panel because it doesn't fully switch. Well, now I'm only getting 25 milliamps on the 200 milliamp setting. So I know when I'm beat this isn't going to work. I'm certainly not going to get um, half a watt. What's that in amps? Let me just work that out. Uh, so it's 0.5 watts divided by 3.2 volts. So I mean we should be looking at 150 milliamps. Well we're not getting 150 milliamps if I cover the solar panel. We're getting 25 milliamps. So I give up. I give up, it's not worth the bother. And just in case it was the uh, nasty Lai Peng battery that was uh, failing me, I've just put a tasty Eneloop uh, cell in there. LEDs on, 25 milliamps. It's not going to work. In fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to build my own high power garden solar light using a 20 watt solar panel which just sits in the car and doing nothing. Uh, this cheap eBay solar charge controller which I haven't used for anything. This battery which I found in the street which came out of one of those um, cheap jump starter units. I don't even know if it works. Uh, this is a daylight switch which I bought on eBay and hadn't used for anything. This is a boost converter supposedly capable of 150 watts. Well, we'll see, won't we? 
uh, heat sink and fan which um, I got free effectively when I bought another heat sink on eBay and a 30 watt LED so look forward to my high power 30 watt actually I might drive that a bit less perhaps I'll drive that at 20 watts uh, high power garden solar light project